Hello brothers and welcome to my review of episode 20 of Bakugan Evolutions. I'm Haru Ren, so spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Evolutions episode 20. So we first begin with when Benton disappeared. Faustus has revealed Benton is coming to the academy to deliver data and get a tour of the academy. Okay, so you're telling me that Benton has been supporting you guys for so long and he hasn't even seen the place? Now come on Benton, you're supposed to be the smart businessman! Turns out Benton's ship went MH370 on him, sorry kids, disappearing without a trace, so the Awesome Brothers go and look for him, and they find the wreckage and where he went in like two minutes. A hey, Animus was already investigating where Benton's ship went and what happened to him, and somehow the Awesome Brothers found out everything in the span of a couple minutes, and AA Animus are still running around like lab rats. Okay, AA Animus really needs to think about giving their staff a complete overall here. Benton got kidnapped by the gate crushers because they want the data. I'm going to tell you now that this is boring as hell. Instead of this being some big mystery story that the awesome brothers have to figure out, it's just them trying to get past a bunch of obstacles because the gate crushers are trying to stall them long enough to get past the firewalls in Benton's briefcase. Even though the visuals and animations look cool, it's really overall just Bakugan target practice. So they reach the final stage after wasting over six minutes of nothing happening, and Dan and Drago are cut off from the rest of the awesome brothers. Drago is caught in a trap and they're fighting in an area where there is a field that prevents Baku cores from appearing. So Drago is not only unable to power up, but he's also a sitting duck. Or in this case, he's a sitting dragon. The last firewall encryption is breached, and they need Fink Benton's fingerprint to access the data. Right away! <clears throat> Why didn't you do that before? I'm going to teach you that even Drago can be defeated if one just uses one's head. Wow, way to use one twice in the same sentence, writers. So Benton, after knocking out the gate crusher and instead of grabbing the briefcase along with him, he tackles Wagner and Drago one-shots Hydronoid. The gate crusher set the base to self-destruct and the awesome brothers get away in time. Though, what was up with using a fading transition there? That seems so out of place. Hmm, unfortunately, they now have all my data. That is your fault. And now with the gate data, the gate crushers are a step closer to separating Earth and Vestroya. This honestly did not make me care. This could have turned out to be a pretty intriguing episode, but there was just no thought put into it. All style, no substance. It was a bore to watch, sorry. So the next part is Lightning's Elegant Day. Hey, you want to know why Lightning wasn't in the last part? Well, before the Awesome Brothers met with Faustus to do that boring episode, Lightning was just being Lightning, just wandering around town. He catches the eye of Madame Murray, voiced by Janice Hawk, and she pretty much kidnaps Lightning by reenacting a Family Guy gag. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. So, Madame Murray takes Lightning back to her mansion and spoils him like crazy with toys, a bath, food, and... <gasps> is that egg fried rice? Fuyod. Also, why in this scene does Lightning look like he just finished having brutal dog sex? Madame Murray leaves and Lightning meets Hank the guard dog, voiced by Rob Tinkler, who admires Madame Murray a lot and will do anything for her to ensure she is happy. He even wishes that he was the favorite pet but feeling overlooked because he's not anything special. How on earth does this dog have more character than all of the Masters of Disasters combined? The mates take Lightning to a room to show him a very ugly outfit he'll be forced to wear. Why is this room so dark with the lights turned off? And why is the maid talking like she's going to send Lightning to his death? Oof, oof, and your oof. new name will forever be... Levy Poo the 41st. I know it's supposed to be symbolism of the horrific lifestyle and feelings that Lightning will be subjected to, but you're showing Lightning a dress, not his torture chamber! Madame Murray even had a lion Jesus, not even the king of the jungle is safe from her wrath. I have made a huge mistake. I mean, did you? You were sent here against your will. I'd hardly call this a mistake. Lightning runs and Hank chases him. <laughs> Jesus, how strong is Lightning that he's able to charge through glass without a scratch? Hank accidentally rolls out Aqua's Lepithion and him and Lightning battle, which isn't a long fight. Lightning wins easily with a nano gun, probably because Hank has no experience battling. Hank lets Lightning leave and he faces the wrath of Madame Murray. Uh, you rolled out a Bakugan? Oh, okay, never mind. It's incredible! Why didn't you tell me you had the power to do that sooner? You can't even understand him, lady! Madame Murray makes Hank her new favorite animal, giving us good ending for Hank. Good for him, but seriously, why do I feel so bad for him? And the episode ends with Lightning sleeping on Athena's cubbo, much to her annoyance. Get off of my cubbo! 
So that was episode 20. Let me know your rating of the show was in the comments down below. The first part where Benton disappeared was honestly not that great. It was dull and lackluster and too predictable. I could have seen something better, but I guess they didn't come up with something better than making our heroes go through an obstacle course. The second part with lightning was actually one of the best lightning episodes though. At least that was entertaining and for some reason they put so much more effort into giving this random one-time dog character actual character. So overall, I think I'm going to give this a nanogon in the middle. Thank you for watching this review of Evolutions. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!